The calibration is now done, the camera is set up, and I have spent two days working on the software, and now is the moment of truth to find out will it work or not. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are doing something amazing. I came across a video on LinkedIn and I want to see whether we can build it or not. So here is that video and you can see the ball is being trajected. It is detected using some computer vision techniques and we will try to do the same thing and see if we can get similar results. I will head on to my studio and we will try to figure this out. So here's the plan. We are going to find a video that has a table tennis in it and people are playing and the ball is visible and the quality of the video should be good. So let's go ahead and find it online. So we have a big problem. The videos that we are finding online, they're not actually good, especially in terms of our project. So here you can see the angles, they're not right. So most of them, they don't show the complete table tennis. And you can see this one, for example, uh, well, it is of table tennis, but you can see it's not relevant to us at all. If we go to some paid versions, then it is quite expensive. You can see it's $60 for a single clip. The clip is good and it can be used, but we are looking for a different angle. So we do have a problem, but the solution is quite simple. We can make our own video using a table tennis. Now I do have a table tennis lying around, but it has been collecting dust for a while. So I'm not sure how good it will perform. So let's go ahead and check that out. So this is the room where we have the table tennis. And there you go, as you can see here. And it is quite dusty. So it's time to roll up the sleeves and get started. So the table is all set up now, but the issue is that we don't have enough light. So as you can see, the room is a bit dark. So what we will do is we will add some additional lights and then we will start filming. So here we will have some lights. So you can see we have one of these, one of the big ones. So we can use both of these. We'll also need some tripods to actually fix them. So this here you can see is the one that attaches to a table, but I don't want to use these. We'll use these instead, which you can just place on the floor and that should be good. So here are the lights and we are going to turn them on. As you can see, we are pointing them up rather than directly on the table. Because if we do that, then we will have a lot of shadows on that wall. So we want to avoid any shadows. And what we can do is we can turn on the other one as well. There you go. So we have light pointing out and there we have our table lit up. So now we can go ahead and play some game. As you can see, I have downloaded the video on my computer and it is quite good and it's around two minutes. So what we will do now is we will add it to our programming software and start working. So as you can see, the video is now loaded in our programming software. The next step is to find the ball. And the easiest way to do this is using color detection. So let's go ahead and find that orange ball and see how it works. So I've written the code so that we can find any color using these sliders. So all we have to do is we have to move it around and you can see we are detecting different colors. So if you think about the orange color, it is close to the red color in our color spectrum. So we can keep this value low and we will bring this low as well. And as you can see, we are starting to get some orange color. And if we can move this around, we are detecting the ball and there's some orange color here as well that is being detected. But now you can see we also have the hand being detected sometimes. So in order to remove that, we will increase this value of minimum and hopefully, and there you go. So that removes that hand. As you can see, the hand is there now, but it was not detected. So now we have some good detection using our color detection method. Let's go ahead and find the edges or the exact location of this ball. 
so now you can see the ball is being detected and you can see we have the exact location of the ball as well but the issue here is that we are also detecting this part now i tried removing this part with the area and it was removed but removing this part with the area is difficult because then we lose some detections of the ball as well so what can we do it's very simple all we will do is we will add a black region here so that it doesn't detect this part so here we will create a mask black mask and this will get removed so here you can see we have added this black mask and that allows us to detect only the orange ball so that is pretty good now this technique works well for this video but what if we change the video or what if we change the lighting conditions then this will not work the reason is that color detection is not very accurate and it's not very reliable so what other options do we have the good thing is we have some ai experience so we will bring in ai and we will create our own model to detect these balls so let's go ahead and create a custom model so that it can detect these balls very easily but creating a custom model is not very easy because we have to collect a lot of data and we have to label each of the balls where exactly it is present so if we start labeling the data it will take us hours of work and it will be very difficult but don't worry we have a solution instead of labeling the data ourselves we can use the color detection bounding boxes to label the data so we will have all the regions where the ball is present and all we need to do is we need to convert it into the format which the ai will understand in this case we will be using the yolo method and we will convert all our bounding boxes in yolo format so far i have written the code myself but now i will ask chat gpt to write the rest of the code what exactly do we need we need the data in yolo format First of all, we need to collect the ball location and we need to save it in the format that YOLO understands. So all of this will be done using ChatGPT. This is the code that we have written so far. And here at the bottom, we are writing add to this code the functionality using functional programming to save the detection in YOLO format similar to the code below. So we have a sample script that I wrote earlier. So this actually saves in YOLO format. So now we want to merge these two code together. And here you can see this is the output. So if we simply copy this and we paste it here, then we can run and try it out. So now the program is running and it is saving all the files. So let's go ahead and check that. If we stop it and if we go here, you can see we have detected objects. This is the new folder that was created and this is all the data that was collected. Now, as you can see, this is all of the data. And if we open up any of the text files, then it has the location of the ball stored here. But the question is, how exactly do we know if the data that is collected and the bounding boxes, they are correct or wrong? So for that, I created a magical script that will allow you to check and edit or even delete all the bounding boxes so that it's easy for you to sort out. So let's go ahead and check that out. So here's that magical script. All you have to do is you have to define the folder, the format type, and that's pretty much it. So if you run this now, you will get all the detections. So here you can see this is the first image. And if I move, if I press the space bar, then it will move to the next image. And as you can see, the ball is being tracked. It's being detected. Now here is another script that I've written to split the data. Now you might be wondering where exactly am I getting all these scripts from? Now I have done some previous projects that were similar to this. That's why I have written all these uh, scripts. So it becomes easy for me to create these projects. So now is the fun part and we're about to start the training process. So let's go ahead and click on the run button so it can start the training. So here you can see we have 2,228 images for training and we have 808 images for validation and none of them are corrupt all of them are ready to go so here you can see our training process has started and now we will wait for it to finish and we will have our object detection file so now our training has been completed and if we go to train 2 here are the best weights now we will use these weights to check our detection whether it works well or not so now is the moment of truth. Let's see if it will work out. So there we have it. And there you go. So you can see the ball is being detected very accurately. And it is quite fast. It is running at a faster rate than the actual video. 
So that's very good because the YOLO detection is quite light. So that's why we are getting some good detection at a good frame rate. So now I'm thinking, let's take it a step further and create some animations and create a bird eye view of the table. This will allow us to know where exactly the ball hit. And from there, we can create a heat map to know which player played it at which angle and how exactly they're performing. So let's go ahead and do that. So after doing some testing, here is the final result. As you can see, there's a trajectory being trajected of the ball. And not only that, we also have an image here that is telling us where exactly did the player hit the ball. So here you can see where the ball is bouncing and hitting. So that is what we can actually judge and create from just this view. So here we are using the top view to get all the different angles. Today is a new day and yesterday we had some great success with our software. It worked really well with the table tennis video. So today I want to try it with a real webcam and see how well it performs in real time using a live feed. So I have my laptop here and I am adding all the software's requirements so that we can use this software remotely and it will be fun to see how it performs. So I just finished installing the software and you can see how slow it works. And at first I thought, okay, this is an epic fail because it's so slow. I remember that I forgot to install the GPU version of Torch. That's why it's so slow. So let's go ahead and install that and it will be much faster. So now the installation is complete for the GPU version. And as you can see, it's much faster than before, but I think it's still not real time. So I want to see what exactly is the frame rate. So let's add the frame rate part using the CV zone package so we will know the exact value. There we have it. Now we can see the frame rate is around 50. I just remembered that the video we shot was actually 60 frames per second. That's why it seems a little bit laggy because it's not running at 60, but it's real time because it's running more than 30 frames per second. So that's good enough for us. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and check it with our webcam. If we get slow frame rate, we can reduce the size from 1080p to let's say 720p. As you can see, the webcam is now working. So all we need to do is calibrate the table before we can start playing. So let's go ahead and do that. calibration is now done the camera is set up and I have spent two days working on the software and now is the moment of truth to find out will it work or not so I have the ball in my hand and I'm going to throw it and let's see if it will be detected or not let's go ahead and test it out so as you saw the ball was detected and the hit was detected as well you can see there's a dot there so let's do some more testing. If we move the ball around, you can see it moves well. If it changes the direction, you can see it draws it again. So that's pretty good. And if we move around, you can see the detection is quite good. So let's go ahead and play a game and see how it will work there. So as you can see, we are already missing some detections, so that's not great. So what I will do is I will use another webcam, which is 60 FPS, and hopefully this will give us some better results. So as you can see, the frame rate now is more than 30 FPS. Earlier, we were getting less than 30, but now we are reaching around 40. It's still not 60, but it is better than before. So I'm hoping that we are going to get some better results. So let's go ahead and test it out. So this was a fun project and it worked out quite well. The detection part was really good, but where it hit the ball on the table tennis, that detection was not that great because we need another camera on top of it so that it can see where exactly the ball hits. So we can do that as well, but I think this is pretty good for what we have done in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like such projects, comment below and I will make more of such videos. See you in the next one.